In this video, I will cover different deployment call flows with Microsoft Teams, Direct Routing, and Cube. We will be focusing on the PSTN aspects of this solution, in particular, direct routing, where the customer connects the Microsoft Teams phone system to PSTN or other PBXs, including Communication Manager. Cube is a Microsoft Direct Routing Certified Session Border Controller, where you can scale from hundreds of concurrent SIP sessions to thousands of sessions. In this slide, you can see an overview of direct routing architecture with media bypass disabled. In this case, a user that is in the corporate network and call PSTN, the media will flow to the cloud and come back to the SVC. It will not stay local to the SVC for PSTN calls. For signaling, the Microsoft's SIP proxy talks to the SVC through a TLS connection on port 5061. It is a mutual TLS connection to Office 365, which basically means there is an exchange of certificates from Microsoft and Cube to establish a secure signaling connection. Next, we see a connection to a CUCM phone instead of PSTN. Teams client is registered to the Microsoft phone system in the cloud. Teams do not use SIP but HTTP for signaling to the cloud call control. Every time Teams client places a call, the media will traverse to the cloud since we're looking at media bypass off. Next, we have a call to an endpoint registered to CUCM, but Cube and Microsoft are configured for media bypass on. The media from Teams will not terminate in the cloud, but instead terminates on Cube's external interface. For this to work, an additional configuration is required to enable ICE. ICE is a mechanism used by the Teams client to discover the external IP address of the Cube, so that the client can negotiate the media IP addresses to bypass the Microsoft Cloud. Next, we have a call coming from the SIP provider to Cube. We're using UCM as a single call control, and we configured a remote destination to be able to bring a phone register to CUCM and the Microsoft Teams client at the same time. This use case is documented in the UCM to Microsoft Teams interoperability document. Lastly, in this diagram, a Microsoft Teams user outside of the enterprise network is having a call to a Cisco IP phone on-premises. In this slide, we show the high availability cube architecture where we have calls flowing through an active and standby cube simultaneously. In case of the active cube becoming unavailable, the standby cube can take over the signaling and media and the call is preserved. All signaling and media is sourced from the virtual IP address shared across an active and standby cube. When adding a signed certificate from a certificate authority to set up the mutual TLS connection to the cloud, we can use a generic subject name or a wildcard based certificate. This slide shows one active and one standby cube, but it is possible to have multiple active cubes receiving and sending calls to Microsoft Teams. Cube has an extensive number of interoperability documents. You can check out the interoperability portal listed at the bottom of this slide. Not only you can use Cube to UCM, but as discussed to multiple SIP providers or third-party PBXs. This concludes a quick overview of Microsoft Teams Direct Routing and Cube. You can also check the Cisco Live breakout session where we cover Microsoft Teams Direct Routing and Cube.